Okay, I guess if anybody's connecting, we should be we should be um, should be on now. Let's see. Uh, not too many people have connected yet. I hope they can. Uh, let's wait a few minutes until maybe other people can um, can join. And I realize this may be a little hard for some, but um, it's interesting that the university has now canceled in-person classes. So this, this could help. Um, so I'll just wait five minutes to see other people. Other people join, I can't quite. Um, Oh, let's see if I can see. Participants, okay. Oh, great, okay. Thank you guys for joining. I guess for a moment, I didn't know if anybody was on the other side of this, uh, of this setup. Um, so I welcome everyone. Thank you for, uh, for, yeah, for trying this experiment. I've never done it myself. It took me a while to set up everything yesterday, but it should be, um, it should be okay. And I'm actually recording it, which, um, which is good because actually I don't have a video yet for this uh, particular assignment. So people who are, um, um, maybe not able to watch it now, they can watch it later. Um, let me know via chat if, um, um, yeah, if you have questions, okay? And I can try to monitor that and, um, and give you um, feedback, okay? So um, I'm going to switch to my uh, drawing uh, view and see if we can do that without too many uh, glitches. Um, I'm going to do a funny thing, which is the camera is looking at me, but instead it has to look at what I'm doing. So let's see if we can do this. Okay, here we go. And yeah, I had to flip the camera 180 and bring it over me. So that looks pretty good. Um, okay. I feel like I'm doing one of those DVDs with commentaries. Um, yeah, okay. Oops. So this is the drawing that we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna, um, let's see. Um, and it's a drawing of the cube. And let's see if I have the same cube. No, I don't. But um, so we're going to be drawing the cube with um, the two halves of the cubes, two views of it in uh, isometric drawing, okay? Which is that drawing using the uh, uh, the thirty thirty oops the thirty thirty degree uh, thirty sixty rather thirty and sixty um, triangle that we've used before, and um, I don't have. Uh, you probably don't either at home, especially uh, straight edge, but I got myself a T-square, uh, which I'm gonna be sliding up and down in place of that, which is actually quite practical. Um, and if I didn't have that, um, I would use uh, two triangles. Okay, so in other words, I would use uh, one triangle like that, and I would be sliding my other triangle this way to get my different, um, different lines, okay? Um, and I might switch back and forth to demo how that is done again, um, if you don't have a T-square or the straight edge. Um, so we're going to draw the, um, the cube. And as you know, or you should have checked by now that you're too, um, by the way, if you, if you still can go to school or want to go to school and retrieve your, your uh, you're a um, 
your rough cube, that would be great. If not, as long as you remember your section, your design, you should be able to do this drawing even without having the physical model. Anyway, the two, the two halves have to be exactly the same, okay? Meaning when you look at them, all the parts are identical. What's high here, it's high on the other one and low and low, et cetera. And the two views we're gonna do is one view where when you look at the cube, it's gonna be perfectly symmetrical um, left to right, okay? So it's gonna be a, a mirror image. And um, you'll see that with isometric views like this, um, some lines will become kind of not, not so much three-dimensional anymore. So sometimes it might look funny, but never mind. Um, the other view on the right side um, is gonna be turned 90 degrees. So then now we, we have a view that's actually, um, that's actually asymmetrical. So if I split this view down the middle, um, the right side is gonna be different looking than the, uh, than the left side, okay? So uh, I'm just gonna set up my paper. Uh, actually I already have. Uh, and I'm not gonna go through the process of drawing the, um, the title block now, but um, I'm gonna measure this. Uh, I know there are two inches uh, to the edge. And so what you can do to set it up is actually draw two, um, two circles with radius of two edge. That's one way of doing it. So I would draw uh, two circles like that in the right spot. And then I would draw inside that. But let's, let's see how we can do it both ways. Um, by the way, I just see that there is hidden lines in these drawings. So we're not, we're not gonna draw hidden lines, okay? So I'm gonna put it here. No, uh, do not draw hidden lines. Uh, just because that complicates the drawing. Okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna take this as a reference and I'm, I'm gonna space my, um, my two views five inches apart, okay? Um, so actually, why don't I do this right? I will. Uh, well, at least even though I don't draw my um, title block, I will at least um, uh, center them um, top and top and top and bottom, etc. So that's a inch. Uh, half inch on the bottom again for the for the title for the border and then three quarters for the title block and that gives us seven and a quarter is that right yeah okay just give me a second so seven and a quarter so that's three and a half um, more or less in the center okay uh, what I'll do as usual, I'm gonna go ahead and, and draw pretty dark lines so they show up on screen. Um, they might uh, be too dark for a final drawing for you, but for me, this way you can see. Um, so I measure my center and now I said that I need to do it at five, uh, five inches apart. So I mark five inches. And I'm going to, um, I'm now going to mark my centers like so. And uh, once in a while, I'll bring back my chat view here. So if somebody has a message, please. Uh, Justin, you can hear, uh, try to turn on your volume on your computer. Um, sorry if I use first names. No, my okay, yeah. Because uh, everybody else seems to be okay. All right. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can get a good. It doesn't look. 
focus does it or maybe it's just me yes it's pretty good all right um i might have to edit this video a little bit later okay so now i've got my centers again they're going to be five inches apart and centered within your drawing window right so what i was saying earlier about um doing two circles is just a nice way to set up um, set up the um, isometric because if you remember a cube in isometric drawing um, the other frame is going to be an hexagon um, so just because it's fun to do that i'm going to draw it uh, and show you how we could we could get that shape the beginning shape And two. Let's see, you now I have to get the right. Yeah, and then what I would do is point at the bottom of my circles, at the bottom edge, and do yet two more circles, uh, top and bottom. Like that. And Uh, sorry about the exposure changing back and forth. Um, okay. I'm just going to double check. I can probably edit this stuff out afterwards if... Um, I'm just double checking to make sure that um, the other people are not having issues hearing me. Um, Um, hold on, let me just check one thing, okay. Somebody's asking a white from the bottom. Well, you have to center it, okay? You have to measure from the bottom of your, from the top of your title block to, um, to the, um, let me just check here. Uh oh. All right, everybody, sorry. I'm just, I'm just a little afraid that maybe perhaps you'll not be able to hear me, but um, Okay, great. Sounds like some people can hear me, so that's good. That means probably all the others should be able to hear me too. Uh, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna resume. Um, somebody was asking how far from the bottom. Uh, you gotta do a little math, but I think it's uh, three and a half plus one. Um, 
Let's see, I just measure my title block. going to draw it. Okay, give me a second, everyone. So I can give the answer here. Um, it doesn't matter that it's perfectly centered, but it's, um, yeah, it's three and five, three and five sixteenths. Yeah. Um, so if this is the, um, this is the border. Um, then from there is three and five sixteenths. Okay. And then from here to here, it's five inches. And the radius is um, two inches. Okay. The radius being your compass aperture. Um, okay. You don't really need the compass. Uh, it's just kind of fun to know that you can draw the cube starting with the compass. But um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use this triangle that I have from my Italian days, because uh, it's lighter, it doesn't mess up my, my uh, exposure so much. Okay, um, I'm gonna zoom in because it's going to be easier to see. Just doesn't look sharp though. I'm not sure if this camera has a, a minimum. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay a little bit further out for now. Okay, uh, just bear with me. I'll um, actually this is too too big. Um, all right. So now if I use the um, If I use the the bottom here of the circle as my starting point and use my uh, 30, 60 triangle, you'll see that uh, that my lines that I draw correspond to the uh, you know to the shape of an hexagon, and that's just the way the geometry works. Um, so that's the first thing you need to do. Once again, just do it much lighter um, because, uh, because you need to darken only the, uh, you know, the shape of your cube uh, later, not the construction lines. All right, I'm just gonna go a little fast here so I can get, I can get the main construction Correct. Um, and so you should be able to do everything um, with your uh, 30, 60 triangle or and, this, and a straight edge. Um, but definitely don't do it kind of by hand, so to speak. Um, Okay, if you don't have the T square, use your other triangle like this. The only trouble is every time you have to adjust first before you can actually draw your lines. Um, okay, I'm just still checking. Maybe it's just my screen that it doesn't look so sharp, but um, hopefully it's okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna move to some a little bit of a sketch now. Um, so for this drawing, even if you don't have your cube, uh, what you want to have is your section, right? Which you might have, um, hopefully you remember it. Okay, 
so if you if this is your section in this case uh, yeah like that then what you need to do definitely is have a little um, have a little storyboard of how your section is going to work um, okay so then I have to turn it. Remember to always have tracing paper because it's going to be easier to do everything. Uh, so if you remember, this is how we did it. We, we mirror the left part onto the right side. And then we took the entire shape and we rotated 180 over to the other side. So that's, that's the other part. So now I can just okay. So that's now my storyboard, which I definitely want to keep handy because um, it will help us to find our way as we draw the cube. Okay. I'm also going to draw the grid. Uh, And that way, again, I know, I know where I am. I'm going to draw my, um, my folds. Okay. And I'm going to call this one and I'm going to move that way in my, um, in my steps. Okay. Um, let me just see if I have, all right. So the trick now, of course, is to draw this, this, this path, right? Um, which is gonna come around this way on these faces. So it's, it's not so hard to do it on the faces in front because let's say this is number one. Actually, let's not just say it. Let's say it is, it is definitely like that. Three and four are gonna be from the back. Okay. Okay. So I'll do it eventually with the triangle, but um, if you have a grid here, right, with the same angles, um, I can easily plot, let's say if I start here, right, I can easily plot that because I can just find my spots. Um, and then I come around from there. I pick it up and I would end up with something, let's see, that looks like that, okay? So that's the outside of the left and right view, which is number one and number two. And um, now the center of your cube is the center of the hexagon, the center of the shape, okay? So if I put my cube together like that, Sorry, this is a little too big. Um, and it's a little bit distorted now, but if I were to look at it, yeah, this way, right? Uh, my center, the center of the cube, which I cannot see, well, actually I can't see it if I do this, but corresponds to the center of, the, of this, of the full cube if I was, if I was, if I was not, um, you know, splitting it, okay? So just remember, once you do the outside, you can um, you can simply connect the uh, the points on the edges of your cube to the center. So basically, I would just go like that, okay? And again, if you have the cube, it might help. But okay. Now the trick is on the other side. So on the other side. Um, Actually, yesterday, as I was setting this up, I came up with a pretty good, I think, uh, way to simplify the process. But um, tracing paper, again, helps. What you need to do now is you need to come around and draw a grid on that back side. And of course, things are going to start getting a little, a little um, tricky because we have to you know imagine that we're going backwards and the way i used to do it is okay i have this 
but here's where tracing paper becomes beautiful because you have these layers and you can just highlight what you need. Um, okay, like that. See now, if by doing by using tracing paper, I've magically now removed the grid on the um, on my two front faces, so I get less confused because I want to focus on the grid on the right side. Anyway, at this point, I've reached halfway around the globe, around the cube. Um, so I'm here, and the way I used to do it is, I used to do it simply like Battleship. If you ever played Battleship, I'm moving this way, and I know that I, can, that I need to go two across and one down. So from this spot, I go two across and one down. So it happens to match that point. Oh well, never mind. So we'll just mark it there. Then I need to go up to and across one. So up to and across one. So that would be up to and across one. So that would be here. And then the last one is across and down one, across and down one. So now I'm gonna use a different color and you could do this if you're, um, uh, you know, if you're sketching it. So notice how, of course, this line matches this line. So that's okay. Um, and then I would just continue. So if I, if I make my grid, um, if I make my grid now on this side, and again, I can isolate it because I have tracing paper. Uh, right now I'm here, I need to keep going. So I need to go one over and one down, one over, sorry. I need to go across and up one across and up, then down two and across one. So back to there, and then it's gonna end up at the same place. And this is actually a little bit harder because it's the symmetrical view. Um, okay, so that's now my back and I can connect all those lines as well. Um, And because of the geometry, you see that the cube looks a little funny, right? It looks a little flat in a way because all these lines match. Um, so why don't I do the second one? Uh, so this is the, in the drawing. In my drawing, this would be this view, okay? All right, uh, the other one, will be the one that I'm gonna draw now on this side. So let, let's try to do the other, um, the other cube. So I'm gonna draw it on. I'm gonna keep my storyboard um, there, right? Because again, that's very important. Um, So this was the view I just drew. Okay. Like that, symmetrical. And now I'm gonna turn my module and I'm just gonna turn it 90 degrees. Let's see, yeah, 90 degrees this way. Um, and that's gonna be my second view. So two is gonna be on the le left and three, face number three is gonna be on the right. Um, and so what that means is that now I take my starting point to be, um, to be number two, okay? So I start, I start my trip at number two. So let's do that without even looking at the cube anymore. Um, see if we can draw it. Okay, um, this helps by the way, even if, you know, again, to just sketch it by hand. Um, so I start with the grid on the left and on the right. Um, and again, that's my starting point, right? Remember, because we turned the cube 90 degrees. So two is gonna be here now, and that's gonna be three, that's gonna be four, and that's gonna be one from behind. Um, 
So my starting point then is there. So I'm here, I go, and now I can just, again, quickly plot my, my points uh, and then connect them. Uh, now I'm here, I go down to, well, I can see it like that, like that. So again, the front is easy, right? Relatively easy. Um, but as soon as I do it, I can, again, immediately connect because if I have those lines, I might as well. So uh, if you recall, this is one of those examples where these two faces are actually part of the same plane. So I'm going to skip drawing this line, right? This cube is constructed with that line, but, um, um, but in fact, uh, we're not going to show it because we're going to construct it with one big piece. Um, so that would be this line right here, right there. Um, so instead, I'm going to connect all the other lines. All right, and this would be one big area. Uh, because I'm doing this by hand now, I can't predict exactly how the, the exact the geometric drawing will be. I'm going to guess that this maybe is a little bit under. So when we have these situations now, um, it's going to give us a little bit of a better depth. Oops, sorry. No, this one definitely connects there. What's this other one? Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly. Okay, so now I do the same thing with the tracing paper. I go over, I draw my grid on face number three. Uh, let me just quickly check my chat just to see if there is a there's any questions. No. Okay, good. Um, okay, so again, this is now easy because I can I isolate that face. So I'm now at number three. I am at this spot. Sorry, I'm at number four. So I'm, I'm actually, uh, yeah, I'm in the middle here. So I go up across an up point. Yeah, there we go. So now we're going to start seeing something a little more interesting. Um, then across one and down two, across one and down two, and then up and across two here. Okay, I'm going to now draw these lightly. Okay, and again, you can see how it's easier to just isolate with tracing paper. I uh, will now do the grid on my left side to finish. And it's uh, 10 or 5, so I'll see if I can finish this before the break. Um, so now I'm at the end of number four in the back here, I have to go back to the other side. So now I'm at one. And again, if I use this technique of the battleship or a little uh, ant that moves around this, you know, almost like a maze and doesn't really know, doesn't see above the ground, uh, it's a way to isolate the, uh, the problem. So if I'm here, uh, actually, I'm in the wrong spot there, am I not? Yeah, because actually this is wrong. Uh, just give me a second. Okay, that should have gone there. This should have gone here. Okay, so I'm in the middle. I have to go across and up one. This, I keep going this way, right? So across two and up, sorry, from here. <laughs> it's reversed, right? Here I'm going this way, but here I'm going around the cube. So I'm at the half point here, number four. So I'm here, two across and one up, right there, down two. And then I connect back to the other one. Okay, 
And now I can connect again to the, uh, to the center. Some lines. Yeah, so now it's, it's time to just sort of see what might be visible and what might not. And it's getting a little messy, so I will, I will, um, I will start with the front again, just highlighting the part that for sure is, is correct. And then I'll finish the back with the information that I have. And if you make a mistake, it's just tracing paper, right? So we can. Okay. So that's my view from that side. And now we get a lot more dimensionality because of the asymmetric view and because we don't get um, lines that are perfectly, uh, you know, lining up in a kind of flat geometric shape. Um, okay. So, um, Actually, let's do this since we started a little later. Let me show now a trick that I um, yeah that I thought about. Um, that was that I can um, I'm going to use my grid. Rather, I'm going to use my cube. Um, so the, you may or may not need this, depending on how uh, clearly you can see your drawing. But um, uh, what you could do to draw your little storyboard in an easy way that you can then do your final uh, so that you know it's perfect and it's exact, you could um, Does it fit there? Yeah, I can do this. Okay. Um, you could actually sketch um, almost like a, a ribbon, the shape at an angle already, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is, let's do the number two because that one is, um, let's do this one because this one is more interesting. Um, so again, I'm here. If I draw my grid, like this, again, as a sketch. And you, I suppose you could do this as I'm doing it now. You get a more precise drawing. Um, all right, so where are we? So we're here. So I, I start drawing it. Um, yeah. My pencil is very dull, so I'm going to sharpen it, which will give me a chance to show how to sharpen your pencil um, if you're doing sketching, if you're not using the mechanical pencil. Um, that is by pushing the blade rather than, than moving it with your right hand and pushing it with my left hand. And that way you have more control. All right, so now we're here. I keep going down. Yeah, this would be great actually. Draw your your other cube and then do this sketch before uh, before doing the the final. Anyway, here's what I thought. Because now we have to go around, I can do a distorted version of um, my storyboard. Um, let's see. I have to wrap my paper around the cube, right? So this is on my cube. I'm gonna go around. So what I can do is I can actually fold this paper along this edge. Right? And along this edge. So this is actually pretty cool. Because it's a 
first time that I thought about it, could be helpful for many other things. Um, Now, if I look at my cube, okay, that's like this. I know that um, that's too much. Hold on a second. Okay, so now I can draw the other side, but even if I don't know exactly how it is. Um, no, actually, you do need the storyboard, and now we're gonna make the same storyboard with this funny up and down zigzag shape, meaning um, that I can fold this, this is gonna be my back, right? So now I'm just going around my cube, literally. But before I do that, why don't I just, um, repeat these two shapes on the side here and with that, with the remaining two shapes. So let's see if I can do that. Or rather, I've just drawn these two shapes right here. I need to draw these other two. So how would I do that? Because it's going around the corner, I just need to go up and down in a zigzag fashion. So I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna sketch my, and let's see if I'm right. I don't know, this could be a, a flop, but Let's try it. So essentially I'm drawing a kind of flattened out isometric. And for the other one, I do the opposite. Um, so for the other one I do here. Okay. So now as I I draw this correctly here as I go around the cube and then as I turn it, that should give me the correct view on the other side. Now I can't see it because it's light. No, actually that did not work because I went the wrong way. Why is that? Yeah, that doesn't work. Okay, rewind the tape for a moment. Well, I guess it was the first time I was trying it. Um, normally it's break time, but let, give me 10 more minutes, okay? Since we started later. Um, and so, interesting, let's try it again instead. I'm going to keep going in a fashion like that. And this will be the other panel. Same on this side. Okay. So now, I have my storyboard at the top. I'm doing it this way. Let's see if it works if I fold it. And if I fold it now, yes, I get my cube on the back. That is beautiful, I think. Anyway, because now if I draw, let me make this a little smaller again. because I can simply now copy my storyboard, actually. And I can just keep going this way. So we said that this was gonna be number two, number three, number four, and number one for the asymmetrical view. Um, and so let's finish copying that, that pattern onto my angled view. Oops. Oops, oops. All right, and we're going to do the same. Did I do this right? Yes, and then here, and there. So I'll copy this 
Let's do that. There we go. Okay, so why don't I actually now darken this so I can really see it. And I'm gonna highlight my corners too, my folds or my hinges. Okay, so. I now fold it, I get, but it's a funny cube if you were to look at it, you know, of course, as a real cube, um, right? But in terms of, I think it works. Actually, no, I came up with the wrong line again. <laughs> Bear with me for a second, that's not right. Too low. Uh, instead, it should be in, in the middle there, like that. Right. And here it's correct. Yeah. If I now fold my pieces, I get the that I'm seeking. Okay. So what I'll do now is I'll put this away for a moment. And um, in order to draw it, uh, to see what's visible and what's not, I try not to actually, um, I try not to worry about it and, um, and draw the lines first. Okay, so let's do yet another piece of trace. And I'll start from the front because that's what I see, right? So it's easier. So I'm just gonna connect from the front, from the spots on the front, uh, and also what's al already on the front faces because I know for sure that's going to be um, um, that's gonna be visible. Now the rest, I'm a little bit undecided, but what you could try to do is just, just connect it a little bit, um, just very lightly, and you could connect all the lines. Yeah, here we are. And you can even draw them like that. You could just draw the, all the lines, connect all the lines, and then, just decide trial and error to see what's really visible. So I can I can see that that's going to be in front of these other little bits in the back. Okay, so that's my cube. So this approach will let you um, kind of solve uh, the correct view with this with these steps. Okay, so that's great because now I can simply duplicate this drawing on my geometric, you know, on my good drawing. Um, and I don't have to do, you know, a lot of guessing. Uh, yes, this is correct. Okay, so uh, let's take a 10 minute break, not 15, but 10 minutes. I'll write it here. Um, oh, 10 minute break and we'll come back at uh, 1030. Okay. And then if we finish early, um, we'll just, uh, I'll, I'll leave the connection open for questions. If people have questions. Um, so we'll come back at 1030. Um, and then we'll just, you know, we'll just, you know, if other people have to go, that's okay. Okay. But, uh, but do come back after 10 minutes now so that we can, um, uh, we can uh, we can finish it. Okay, thanks everyone. I'll I'll um, I'll see if if the chat is telling me anything. Uh, I don't think so. Okay, great. So um, I'll I'll go ahead and um, let's see. I'll go ahead and stop the recording. All right, but I'll leave the video on. Um, Actually, I can pause it. Amazing. I'll pause.
Okay, hi everyone, we're back. Um, just so you know, I'm gonna try to record this in the afternoon as well. So uh, this recording is not good. Uh, hopefully the second one will be. Um, anyway, I'm just gonna quickly draw the, um, the, uh, the cubes now with, with the ruler and the, and the triangle. And I, I'll, I should try to move pretty fast since now we, we, we know the solution. Um, and also maybe I'll just say a couple of things about the, um, uh, the rough cube, which if you can get from school, that would probably help. However, please do not go there if you feel like you would be, you know, unsafe or at risk of getting anything. Um, and, uh, yeah, and don't worry about deadlines. Okay. I'll, I'll have to revise whatever the deadlines are going to be, uh, including the final cube and we'll just you know, we'll just stick to drawings uh, instead, instead of the, um, you know, construction. I mean, of course you can keep working on it if you can. Um, and those videos are already on, on YouTube. So you can already consult those for the, uh, uh, for how to construct the final cube. All right, I'm going to switch back again. I'm gonna do this somersault thingy again. And let's see. And we're back on the table here. Um, so what we did earlier um, was actually pretty cool because we first drew a little storyboard, which is always good to have, just, just in terms of um, uh, just having a, you know, a reference, right? A reference drawing that tells exactly where we are every time. And then after we did that, and we have our diagram here um, that's going to be our, um, let's see if I can adjust a little better. This is going to be our technical drawing, those two hexagons, which are going to become cubes. Um, and, um, but before we do that, because it would be a little hard to figure out, especially the, um, the back side of the cube, how to draw that. The front is kind of there in front of you, so it's easier. Um, and so therefore, even in a sketch like this, it's easy to draw, easier to draw that part. But the back part will be really hard. And so we came up with this uh, nifty little trick that's basically doing a little bit of a wraparound of cube. Um, to uh, some kind of funny stretch little cube, which however, weird, uh, it actually really, really works because we, we just duplicated the uh, pattern on our 30 degrees uh, uh, view. Again, as a reminder, that's these 30 degrees, right? Um, then we could simply flip this back because we know we need to go around, but we can't go around in our drawing. It's just impossible. Um, unless we draw on glass and we, no, that wouldn't work either. Anyway, this is a nifty way to go around the cube uh, because in fact, if I now fold this back, I was able to see kind of, you know, in an x-ray view and then yet with more tracing paper, we were able to, um, yeah, just to get, um, the information that we needed to do and then trial and error uh, we figured out the pattern so now that i have this pattern um, this point actually might help to draw my grid back on the front as well so why don't i do that um, uh, a little smaller. That's, that's the real thing. Okay. I'm getting a little confused there. Um, yeah, so this is this is my nice cube, which again, using tracing paper, I could I could figure out. Um, and uh, you still have to draw the grid in terms of where the parts are gonna be on our other drawing, 
but then it's going to be much easier to then do the final drawing. Okay, so I won't redraw the grid here, but instead I'll draw it now on the uh, drawing um, for the. I'll repeat this process for the left view. Which is this? Remember, this was this view right here, and this view is going to be the view on the right side. I'm not going to do it now in the interest of time, um, also because this drawing is quite a bit easier, I think. Maybe not. Um, but um, this, this will help. I mean, I kind of know that I do get this a little funny flat figure. Okay, but I could repeat this process. Um, let me keep this process for the uh, for the other one. And actually, why don't we do it? Why don't we do that? Because this we're going backwards now, but we will need that as well. So I'm quickly redraw my grid. In this ribbon. Um, sketch. And in general, this is a great way to just plan stuff. It's just, I mean, unless again, you're kind of some special um, mind. Uh, it's so hard to visualize all these steps, all these things. And that's so true in many other processes as well. So you need to break it down and you need to figure out some tools that allow you to solve the problems at hand, um, you know, with what you have. In this case, what we have is not SketchUp or AutoCAD or anything like that. We just have tracing paper, which is, um, which is pretty amazing. So now that I have that, I'm actually going to do my, uh, my first view, okay? I'm gonna do this view. For that view, I was gonna start at number one and go around to number two which here is going to be these first ones, right? Um, meaning those are the ones in the front, okay? So I'm looking at this thing here. Um, so that would be number one, and this will be looking at number two. So number one here, um, uh, I'm not gonna do the whole battleship thing again. I hope I can get it right without uh, speaking about it. Let's see. Okay, and, and I get it wrong. <laughs> That's funny. I got it wrong, as a matter of fact, so we'll fix it. Maybe I should play Battleship, but I'm a little stubborn right now. I don't want to play. I just want to draw it. So then I keep going, right? Um, one, two, now, let's see. Uh, this is a good, interesting problem. Now here, I know that's number three. Let's see, one, two, three, and four. Yeah, I think it's right. Um, so. It should be symmetrical, right? Wrong again. Oh boy. And to some here. I, uh, I thought I could do without battleship, but I have to see. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm getting there. Um, so that was three. So now four should be on this side. Um, yeah. So four should be there, which I guess it could help if I do this. Um, and I keep going. The, the beauty about this is that we're doing everything in the front. In other words, everything has become the front and we don't have to go around, right? It's really literally opening up a house, you know, if you were to flatten out the walls of a house. Um, so let's see if I can. 
Yeah, that, that looks good now because it's symmetrical. Um, okay. So now I'm going to speed up the clock because we have already done it before. Um, but it helps. It helps again if I draw my my folds. Maybe my outline. Okay, like that, and now I can. A funny scratch cube. So that's it. And as you can see, it's looking already very symmetrical. So again, with another piece of trace, um, And of course, again, if you have your cube, you can also look at it, right? Um, but it's possible to do it without having the cube. So again, I'm looking at this edge, right? And I'm gonna do again, everything that's in the front because I know for sure that I'm gonna be able to see that. Um, second. As soon as I do my front, um, I just connect all the lines going from that from that front to the center. And again, the center of the cube is smack in the middle. Um, because I know I'll be able to see that. Everything else might be hidden, but that part I do see right in the front there. Um, and now because my outer, uh, the back of the cube, you can see, I can, I can pretty much already see that there's not much there meaning these are the only other outer border that I see. And so that confirms that, you know, the shape of this other view is like that. Um, so once again, the left view on your drawing is gonna look a little flat because of the overlapping um, of the lines. So in other words, because everything matches in isometric drawing, um, this line happens to match, you know, these lines as well. If we had a different angle, you know, we might be able to see, you know, perhaps like that, perhaps, um, yeah, there would be already a little bit more of uh, clues for depth, which we get later when we do the other one, or rather we, we did earlier rather than later. Um, uh, but even so, even in this view, uh, yeah, that's right. In this view, we have, we see more. And things are a little more um, three-dimensional uh, looking. Okay, so that's it. So now we have the front and the right. And if you have a little bit of scotch tape, you can do um, this. So you make your make your space a little more manageable. Um, get rid of everything else. At this point, I probably don't even need that anymore, but you never know. So I'll put it out of the frame for a moment. So this is how the drawing is going to look on the page. Okay. Um, and And what I'll do is I'll leave the construction lines behind because again, it makes it look uh, nicer looking, okay? So now I'll just draw it. Um, so this will be a little, well, there won't be much to say except that you need to construct it again using your, um, your triangles. So I'll go ahead and, and, and draw the grid. Um, Actually, let me give you a couple of tips on how to draw it without measuring too much. Again, okay, try to minimize your work. Um, so if I, if I have my cube that is uh, set up, okay, and this is 30 degrees because it's given by my, um, my 30, 60 triangle. 
the other being sixty right here. Um, then I can really, because of the geometry, I can really take advantage of that. Not only I can do my horizontal lines, meaning those are an angle like this, and my vertical lines like this, but I can also use this other angle, given that this is flat, to do diagonals. And if I have diagonals, here's what I can do. If I measure here, let's say I have, uh, it's two, so these are gonna be a half inch, half inch, half inch. Um, I can quickly do my my lines this way here, okay? But then instead of measuring here, I don't measure, I can, I can use my triangle like this and, and this is gonna give me, the diagonal is gonna give me, now this is not precise, but it's gonna give me my other breaks, okay? So you can do this grid really, really fast without uh, measuring in fact, I think you just need to measure once and that's it. So let's try it. Um, for ease for myself now, again, in the interest of time, um, I, am, I am going to use my uh, T-square, okay? Um, but if I didn't have the T-square, again, what I would do is I would use my two triangles like this. I would have to set them up every time. It's a lot more work. Um, and by the way, if you can, definitely get a, um, a, uh, a drafting board. I looked it up, it's really expensive for some reason, um, like 50 bucks, 60 bucks, which is terrible. But anyway, it's a piece of nice plywood and it's got a, um, I think it's shaped like that. It's got a metal edge so that the board doesn't warp. Um, and it's a very, very nice surface. And I think uh, it's about as big as this, my board right now. So it's, I think it's 24 by 18. Um, 18 by 24, yeah, artboard. I mean, it's, it's always gonna be, you know, you buy it forever once you buy it. Um, Okay, um, and you could prop it, you know, with something in the on the side to have, you know, to have an angle, right? Okay, so let's draw this grid. Um, before I start, let me um, quickly check to see if there is. Um, there is any questions? Okay. Nope, no questions. Okay. Okay. All right. So once again, I will draw my lines fairly dark. Um, you should try to do them as light as possible, really. Uh, just because that's 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 nice. You see them, see them a little bit, just enough for the um, okay. Let me adjust this a little bit. Get this to be square. I will edit this out later. Sorry. No, it's not.
I think I have to, one, one reason that my line should be darker is probably because I can probably, um, the camera can probably focus a little better. Okay, I'll, um, I'll redraw my, um, my outer cube. Um, So I'll measure, you can really measure anywhere uh, on any of the edges. So I'll measure on this edge uh, for markings, which are gonna be a half inch each. Um, draw my grid, okay. And the camera is a little bit challenged by the focusing here, but um, so here I, you can see how quickly I can now um, do my other lines. I can draw a diagonal across like that, and that gives me the inner points. So now I just I just utilize all the information I already have. In this case, I had the divisions here. Um, now I can use this other angle to get the other diagonal, and I get the crossings. I realize I'm going a little fast, but by doing this diagonal, whatever it crosses my horizontal lines, horizontal in in our oblique view, um, I get the grid. Um, and now I could I could start. So, oh, I realize I never take these fellas together. Let me just do that. So I have it as a reference here. And um, and I'll leave it up there. So that's it. And now I can start basically drawing my cube. Um, on the outside in this particular case. And I can do that just because it gives me a nice sense of, um, you know, having accomplished something. Um, it turns out, uh, well, in this particular case, I, can, I really can use my triangle a lot the existing angles, you might have to um, move it around a little bit, but right, it just it just happens to match my um, and I managed to make a mistake. It doesn't match. <laughs> Well, this is great because I'm making lots of mistakes, which tells you that it's, you know, you just have to. Um, pay a little more attention, I guess. Um, so now at the top, in a way, because of this particular drawing, I don't really need to draw the grid on the back, but actually why don't I do it? Otherwise it's gonna look funny. I was just going to say you can use those spots there, but let's quickly draw it. And the diag and the verticals here happen to be pretty much the extensions of the ones in the front. They're the same thing, really. Um, I'm doing it fast now because I like to 
finish before we we close, but um, but you should take your time, right? I'm just being a little bit. Um, so now I look at the drawing and I see, where am I? Well, I really don't know. So if I put this on top, how about that? I know exactly what I need to be, right? Because I can just quickly visualize it. Um, Yeah, those were the last two spots because now I connect everything. And remember how your lines are, um, you know, going across your cube kind of from opposite corners and they make straight lines, every line going through the center. So the same, same is true in the drawing here. The lines are gonna be straight lines going from opposite ends of your design. This line happens to be a horizontal line, so there's not much to that one. And maybe you want to darken your line so that they're all they're all the same. Oh, that wasn't too bad. That was about minutes. Make sure you darken your outer edges of your um, cube. Uh, now, of course, I'm not crossing the lines, right? And again, I, I start from the one, one end and then I start from the opposite end and I kind of meet in the middle because that allows me to make really sharp um, sharp meeting points. Okay, that's the last one. My grid, again, is very dark. So the lines are a little bit, um, you know, my actual cube is still a little bit light relative to the lines. So in yours, if you keep your lines light, should really be standing out. And that's why I'm, I am, um, I still need to set the center line. So I'm gonna do that. And that's my left view, okay? So now let's do the other one, which is again, visually a little more interesting because it reveals a little bit more the shape of the cube. Um, so if I can do this in about 10 minutes, then we can, um, 10, 15 minutes, we can leave the remaining half hour of the class for just, uh, I'll just leave it open in case, um, in case somebody has questions. And, and if you, after that, or after I finish this, if you have to go, um, I'll know that you're gone, I guess, from looking at your, your, um, I don't know where I look actually. I have no idea. I look at the chat box, I guess. I don't know. Okay. So, let that out for a moment. So, I'm going to quickly redraw my grid. Uh, so, what I did is I marked, I marked four points, um, four points here at the bottom, and I just bring them up now. And because I know actually I'm gonna need my verticals also on the back side, I'm just gonna go ahead and do these vertical lines all the way up, might as well. And for this one, I'm gonna leave them a little lighter, okay? Even though you're not gonna see them. Uh, so notice now how I don't need to measure anymore at all. Um, because, let's see, because. I can do this to get my spots on the verticals to give me the horizontal crossings. Mm. 
then I pick them from here and I wrap them around. Um, this process, by the way, we'll use the same process when we do some perspectives. And, um, you know, and this idea of having the grid on the oblique faces like this uh, will apply also when the lines actually won't be parallel anymore, but they'll, they'll converge. Um, the fact that the diagonals will behave in the same perspective way yeah, something happened here that I don't like. This this square doesn't look very square. Uh, what happened there? Just just rushing it a little bit here, and my my dimensions are a little bit off. Okay, that doesn't not happy about that. I wonder why. Check. Yeah, the top one got somewhat expanded. I'm gonna I'm gonna fix it because I don't like it. I don't like to look at it. Meaning I'll just do a double line. Uh, no, actually I'll just erase it. How about that. All right, almost there. I hope the video is sharp enough. For some reason, it looks a little, a little fuzzy. Um, maybe if I zoom out a little bit, yeah, that might help. Okay, I will need, yeah, I'll, I will need the grid on the back there too. So I'm gonna go ahead and that again picking up the lines from wherever I have a reference for them um, and I said that would I would bring this up but I didn't so I have to do that like that okay so now that's it. That's what I need to draw. Again, I start on the other part because it's the simplest. So let's just put it there and let's draw. Well, then I overlap it on the other cube right here. Um, this spot to this spot. Yeah. Sometimes the line, the triangle happens to match what you need to draw. If you're not sure, you can do these lines light and then go back and darken them later. In fact, why don't I do that? I do this. Yeah, it's definitely so much easier to just have this in place. So you don't have to guess, you just know it's in the right spot, so. Okay. Now I have to be careful. Not to think that my angle on the triangle is correct, and instead, instead, always refer back to my sketch right here. Sometimes it is, as in this case. I have to go up. I'm already going in the back here. I'm jumping the gun a little bit. So let me step back, try to finish the front first. More relaxed about it. 
just to make me feel good, I'm going to do the base of the cube. I'm going to draw it. I get something accomplished. By the way, I, I did notice as I was doing these drawings that, yeah, this paper somehow catches, catches the graphite more than really is desired. Um, I did a test on another type of paper called vellum, uh, which is the same or like marker paper that industrial designers use and it was much more free of that uh, problem. Um, okay. So I already have my solution so I can start, yeah, just building. I can see basically this corner, this corner, that corner and that corner connect and everything else is gonna be hidden behind. So that's my center. I have to remember to not draw this connecting line, right? Remember? Uh, yeah, it's this line right here that we have in our cube, in this particular cube, which was not optimized, but we want to have, um, if we do it right. All right. Okay, so we go to the center of the cube with all our corners, except again, this one. I think I made a mistake there, didn't I? No, I did not. Okay, something is not. Yeah, because I made that earlier No, I guess it's okay. I have, to, sorry, everyone, I have to check because I think I might have. Um, that's the hot point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made a mistake here. Oops. I didn't go high enough. Um, that's not fun. Or did I? It seems a little low at this point. It should be a little bit above. Maybe not. Actually, what it should be is just the matches. Um, I feel like I've. goes there, this line goes. Okay, sorry everyone. I'm a, I'm a little, there's something that's not quite looking right there. Um, so I will try to fix that. Um, to fix it by quickly seeing if I can if I can see what problem was. Um, has to go down there.
Okay, I think it's right. It's just. Yeah, this line just happens to match, which is which is not great, but Okay, I'm just doing a quick check here. like that yeah okay so this line actually matches so my mistake here was that um, that this is a continuous line Okay, sorry for the little Yeah. Yeah, I would have because I was thinking this shouldn't have been kind of a flat spot right there. I tell you what, we'll I'll double check in the afternoon and if, if this is um, incorrect, but I think it's correct, I will I will fix it later. I will I will I will double check during lunch. Um, okay, so let me try to finish it. The lines that again we said are visible. I should probably practice this with the same drawing every single time, but that's kind of boring. <laughs> So, so from that spot to this spot. <clears throat> The nice thing is that, <clears throat> excuse me, parallel lines stay parallel, right? So this line is going to be parallel there. I'm going to that spot, and you can see again they stay parallel, right? This line right there is going to be parallel to that line. Yeah, okay. I think it's right. I'm I'm still not happy about that, but that may just be the way the way it worked out. Um, and uh, your cube I'm sure will look different. So let me let me just darken it a little bit more. So as I finish this, um, so for the cube project, again, the, the last prog the last part is really doing the final, right? But um, realize that you might need help. So let's just play by ear in terms of, um, you know, if and when that is due and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are videos on it in iLearn um, and I'll, I'll, I can do another demo like this, um, but, um, we might just have to switch to drawings only. Um, but let, let's keep it flexible, okay? So just bear, bear with me in the situation until, until we'll know more what semester is going to shape. Um, I mean, one thing that might happen is that we just, uh, you know, that everything might be due at the end if things linger uh, more than we wish for. Okay, so this is it. Um, I'll leave it up like this and let me check my chat thing again.
Okay. So I will just, um, I'll just leave this on until, uh, yeah, 11.45, um, but I'll probably see you if you, if, if people log out. Um, at that point, I'll probably stop anything, the recording in any case. Uh, I'll leave it on just in case I need to explain something more um, for the recording. Uh, thank you for, um, you know, joining in. And if you know of some people that couldn't join, and I can see, I don't think everybody did, uh, tell them they can join this afternoon again. I'll basically redo this thing again um, at 1.30, so half hour. Um, okay, all right. Thanks again, everyone. Bye-bye. Uh, again, I'll leave it on. So um, somebody still needs, um, needs help or has questions, okay? All right, take care. I think the view is correct. It just looks a little. Okay, I'll go ahead and stop the recording now. And just for the record today is Tuesday, March 10th, 2020 and we are we were video zooming from home. I was doing the lecture from home because uh, I'd already decided actually before the university canceled in-person classes yesterday, I had decided a few days before that we would do this for the next two weeks. So, all right. I will see you in the afternoon, the others. <laughs>